Okay, ich bin hier mit dem Gründer von Oculus VR und dem Erfinder der Virtual Reality Brille oder des Headsets Oculus Rift, das vor einer ganzen Weile bei Kickstarter so richtig durch die Decke gegangen ist und das jetzt mehr und mehr Fans in der ganzen Entwicklergemeinde findet und ich habe es persönlich schon probiert, es ist der Wahnsinn. Und mit ihm möchte ich mal ein bisschen darüber sprechen, wie es denn weitergeht mit Oculus Rift. So, Mr. Lucky, um, uh, how was your E3? How's feedback from developers from sending out the dev kit of Oculus Rift so far? It's been a really exciting E3. We've had a lot of developers. Uh, we've shipped about 10,000 developer kits. So a lot of those people have actually been stopping by. We've been talking with them about their games. There's, act, there's six or seven games at E3 that are being shown off with the Rift, and two of them, SoundSelf and EVR, are winning a lot of awards. It's very, very exciting. And so we're showing off a 1080p prototype of the next version of the Oculus Rift here at E3. So um, this is one of the topics that lots of people are speculating about. What uh, is what about the consumer product? When it's going to hit? What features will it have? So can you already shed a bit of uh, light on your plans concerning the uh, final product? No. <laughs> I mean. Uh You know, we're trying to get this thing done as quickly as possible, but we also need to make sure that it's a really good experience. We need to get all of the features that we want to, that we really want to get right. Because if we don't get it right the first time, then we can't have a second shot. You only get one good first impression. And so we have to get that right. And also we need a way for content. If we launched a consumer version today or even in six months, there wouldn't be very many games to support it because games have, you know, generally several year development cycles or at least many month development cycles. And so we're waiting for a lot of these games that are just now starting to be shown with the Rift to become actual products before shipping a consumer device. And generally, you're breaking new ground here. You're not doing a kind of a game console. It's a totally new genre of experience. So um, what of the, of the stuff you've seen at E3 and the stuff that the indie devs are doing? Is there something that really surprised you? And, and what do you think in which direction will Rift games develop? I think that everything is going to go in VR's direction someday. I don't know if that is now or next year or a hundred years, but eventually we're going to get there because, you know, games are all about experiences that you can't have in real life, and being able to live those out in the most in the most exciting ways is really what you want to do. There's a lot of cool stuff at E3, like you know, lots of new games. We have two new consoles, but I don't think they're fundamentally altering the way we play games. They're they're like an evolutionary step in what we've been doing all along. So I think it's really going to be exciting to see what people make for VR. Okay, and the, the thing about uh, the indies, they, uh, the devs in general, they have this uh, device a uh, whole, uh, whole time now. You have got some, some uh, software for them, some, some interface. Is there anything um, the, the devs got, got uh, on feedback that they want from you out of the next iteration maybe? Any, any wishes? Maybe more, more information, more, more interfaces, stuff like that? The number one complaint we've gotten has been resolution, and that's why we're showing off a 1080p prototype here to show people that we're working on resolution and that it is going to get better. We're also working on positional tracking so that we can track not only how your head is looking in space, but actually you know, movement through space. And that's going to be a really big step. There's a lot of developers that are excited about making games using those features. Um, and aside from that, we're getting lots of other feedback on the comfort, the ergonomics, software features they would like to see to make integration more easy. And we're paying attention to all of that, and really, it's kind of like the people, are, a lot of our developers are kind of co-developing the Rift with us. They're doing just as much work figuring out what's wrong as we are. Okay, what, what, what's your plan for, for the Rift? Uh, where do you want to go with this? Uh, because right now it is a niche and I think it's very hard to get out of this niche because seeing is believing. Only if you have the Rift on your head you really truly understand uh, VR. So how can you, how do you sell your product? How do you want, what, do you, what are your plans for this? To, to get people to understand what this is? It has to be that good. If it's really, really good, so good that you know people believe that it's something, and maybe they won't understand exactly why. They won't understand why VR is great, but they'll hear from other people how great it is, and hopefully they'll trust them. So, really, if we can make a device that is, you know, has a virtual reality that's indistinguishable from actual reality, I guarantee that people will buy it. Okay, so far Rift is uh, only uh, um, an optic uh, input, so, th so this is the game world, you, the way you see it. But there's also this thing of audio. Is this something you also want to tackle, or is this something you want to leave to other um, third-party suppliers, um, uh, surround headsets uh, and the like? So I'm a huge audio nut, I love audio. Right now we're leaving, at least for the developer kit, we're leaving it to, up to other people, and that's because we couldn't, We don't want to integrate audio into the headset unless we can do it really right. We have to do it very well. And it's hard to do audio well. It takes a very long time to do it. And we're competing with, you know, uh, sets of headphones that cost more than the Rift. You know, all these, a lot of these gaming headsets cost two, three, four hundred dollars all on their own. And so unless we can make a product that is as good as those and we're still able to be an affordable product, then, you know, we're going to continue to leave it up to other people. But it is something that we're experimenting with.
Okay, and then there's the fact that you pretty much uh, created Rift out of the uh, necessity to have VR uh, in a good way, wasn't it? Like that? Exactly. It didn't exist, and I really wish that it did, so I made it happen. And now this thing kind of blew up. Kickstarter was very successful. Everyone who has the Rift on his head is a believer. Um, what's the future for Oculus VR? Are you still trying to, to do all the stuff by yourself? Are you trying to find partners? Uh, are you, do you want to keep um, independence uh, in terms of design and uh, the future of Rift? Can you uh, shed light onto that? We are working independently right now. We're, don't, we're trying to make you know, the best VR device possible. We're not ruling out partnerships, but right now we think that we can deliver a great experience all on our, all on our own. Uh, you know, we're talking to lots of people. We can't say who. We're leaving all those announcements up to developers and companies. And I think people are going to be really happy with the direction that we're going. Okay. Um, any surprises from the dev scene for you? Um, is there any anything with Rift? I played a kind of an LSD simulator with the Rift. Sounds that was weird. Yeah. Uh, anything you uh, like to point out um, that maybe people have overlooked so far? So EVR is done by CCP. It's a space dogfighting game, and so you actually it has it's six on six multiplayer, and you get in spaceships and you fly around and try to you, you have the space battle, and you use your head to actually look around and use it to fire your missiles at people. So it's actually a very interesting game. Cool. And as that was developed specifically for virtual reality for the Oculus Rift. It's, I, it's not an it's, you can't play it without without a Rift. I think that's definitely a future for Rift. Um, uh, experiences and games tailored exactly for this device because it's so different. And uh, one thing, uh, also control-wise, um, what are your experiences with what's, what the community is trying? I think Razer Hydra is quite popular right now, and there's this funky Kickstarter that's also quite successful for this Omni um, trackpad. What are your experiences with that, and where do you think uh, controlling uh, the avatar or virtual reality games is going? I think that there are a lot of advancement, advancements to be made in virtual reality control because right now what we have is a headset, it's just an output device, you know, but there's no way for people to interact using our hardware. So we're really looking at how to make this a complete platform, you know, an input and output solution. And, uh, you know, people will be, again, excited with where we're going in the future. All right, any last message for those people sitting at home and saying, damn you, I want to buy it in a store already. We're trying to get it out the door as fast as we can. Believe me, we don't want to delay it any more than anyone else.